Good morning, friends. My name's Ted, and it's great to join you for morning prayer here at Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us, so before we do anything else, let's pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence as revealed in your word, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. If you haven't done today's readings yet, now is an excellent time to do so. Go on, take all the time you need. We'll be here when you get back. Our verse for today comes from our second lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Pain handled in God's way produces a turning from sin to God, which leads to salvation. And there is nothing to regret in that, but pain handled in the world's way produces only death. Let's pray. Creator Spirit, Advocate promised by our Lord Jesus, increase our faith and help us to walk in the light of your presence to the glory of God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Truth hurts, so the saying goes, and no truth hurts harder than the deepest shame of our hearts being exposed before God. None of us needs reminding of just how inadequate we are before God on our own merits. Yet sometimes perhaps we do need a gentle nudge now and then. This is what the Apostle is referring to in verse 8 of the letter that caused distress. He had given the Corinthians a gentle nudge back in the right direction and it caused them pain to hear it and it caused him pain to say it. Far from the stern firebrand some would paint him as, St Paul is revealed to actually be a huge softy. Desiring the salvation of their souls, he stresses over the manner in which he leads them into heaven. But the Corinthians proved to be made of sterner stuff. Pulling up their big boy pants, they stopped and reflected on the words from St. Paul and used the gentle nudge to their advantage. With earnest diligence, eagerness to clear themselves, indignation over their sins, zeal and readiness to do right, they proved themselves as blameless. Quite often in our walk of discipleship, we are called to respond in a certain manner. Circumstances may or may not be out of our control. But God wants us to lay aside the blame game and get on with doing what is right in the moment. Pain, or lament over our sins, is not to be the end result. Christ's blood is not just to be looked at and wept over. It's only the first step. God is the God who encourages the downhearted. A bruised reed he will not break. A burning wick he will not quench. Using the pain in God's way means to look at what needs to be healed and getting up and healing it. If we can figure out this secret, we will discover that in spite of all our troubles, we'll be overflowing with joy. What words have you heard that, while true, caused you pain? Has it left you in pain? Or will you move through it, learn from it, and enter into our Master's joy? Let's pray. God of encouragement, I pray you discover me in my pain. Don't leave me alone. Help me handle the pain of my sin in your way, so that I may be a source of joy for everyone around me. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, friends. We'll see you again tomorrow. And in the meantime, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. May we rekindle the gift of God within us. Amen.